Good evening, welcome to the programme. We've got such a packed studio this evening. You might have just seen there on, on the opening titles that I feared I wouldn't even get a seat here in the studio. So you have to shove up, will you? <laughs> just uh, do a bit of a squeeze here. I've got to introduce this guy first in case uh, you don't recognise him. Sheffield Wednesday fans probably will. Uh, this is Steve Wormsley, co-editor of the legendary fanzine War of the Monster Trucks. And he's here for a special reason tonight because... It's back. It's back. It's back this weekend, and uh, I'm very delighted to see it. And he's brought he's brought enough here for everybody in the studio, all the guests on the show, and everybody behind the scenes to buy one. That's your hope. Absolutely. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So Steve Wormsley representing the blue half of the city. First time guest. Let's introduce our other first time guest uh, next, who is Craig Denton, the manager of Worksop Town FC, has been since the start of this season. Welcome, Craig. Thank you. And he's a Sheffield Wednesday fan, like yeah. like you. Yep. So that's two against one, and that is our our old friend here, Kevin Gage, game as ever. Good to see you, Gage. You thanks very Thank much you. indeed. A night off from the Manor Hotel at Dromfield. It's yeah, well, I've, I've been working already. I've, I've I've left early to come here. You're Can I just early. say I won't be buying one of those? Yeah. <laughs> this was going to be the challenge of this show. Was going to get you to buy one of these fans. Proceeds to the children's hospital, Kevin. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Would you, you, he'll probably quietly buy one after the show, but he doesn't want to be seen okay. with it on, <laughs> on the show. Craig, um, Worksop Town, uh, as this area goes, uh, it's one of the bigger uh, centres of, of population, you know, outside of Sheffield and Rotherham, Doncaster, Barnsley and Chesterfield. I think Worksop comes next within, within the region. And yet, and this is, I'm not pinning you to the wall on, the, on this one, and yet Worksop as a football club is in the ninth yes, tier yeah, of, the, yeah. of, the, of, the, of the pyramid. It must make, whoever is manager, as you are at the moment, I, I don't say at the moment, fearing yeah. anything, is going to be under pressure to, to change that somehow. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's such a huge club and it's got a massive amounts of potential um, and you can obviously see that in the attendances and things like that, which is, which is great. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a little bit of pressure there, you know, because uh, the expectations of a, a club, we want to be as, as high as we can. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, but I'm enjoying it, so that's good. Are you? Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's a big job, isn't it, at non-league level, whoever is manager of, of works At the moment, I think you're eighth in the table out of yeah. 20 with, with games, in, games in hand. Yeah, we've got about five games in hand, yeah. yeah. You referred to the attendances. I think last weekend, of course, it was during an international break, but I, I believe you had around 440. Yeah. Four and your, four, which is just absolutely huge for uh, for a, a club at you know in the Northern Counties Premier. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're right up there, um, which is which is great, and it's a nice pull for to get players in uh, and to to represent Worksop Town and you know have all those fans um, cheering you on. It's uh, yeah, it's it's great. Hopefully, we've got some new viewers as well tonight from 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 the Worksop area, and we do every week. You know, refer to non-league football. James Gregg will be here in part two, and always talked about. In fact, you went to see a non-league game last Saturday, Gage. You were at the same one that I was working at. I did. Yeah, I treated myself to a, to a, a game at Chesterfield. Uh, treated yourself? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> as paid, a supporter, I, I, I can't. Listen, I paid my fifteen quid or twenty quid, whatever it was. More than so, I did. Yeah. I was working. <laughs> <laughs> and did you get value? Uh, well, it was nil-nil, but it wasn't a boring nil-nil draw. It was, no. it was full of entertainment. Um, the stand of the football in the first half wasn't the best, but second half, I mean, you saw it, they yeah. brought the two big lads on up front, yeah. and they just bombarded... Um, who were they playing? Uh, uh, Havens and Waterlooville. And, Waterloo Waterloo and that's all we've got time for. Bombarded yeah. them, yeah. yeah. It, 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 was, it, was, it was interesting. It was a good it, experience. It was remarkable how the ball stayed out. I don't think I've seen a yeah. bombardment like that fail to produce a goal, yeah. although occasionally at Bramall Lane it has. Well, yeah, that's true. But Chesterfield, they made up for it, you know, yeah. on Tuesday, Wednesday, with that great FA Cup win, so yeah. in the replay. Absolutely. So, uh, so it, it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to uh, show you what kind of a guy Craig Denton is in a moment in a 30-second clip that he doesn't know we're going to be playing. But that's coming up very, very shortly. He's looking suspiciously at me out of the corner of his eye. But before we go, just draw the line under the Sheffield derby, you two. Steve and, and Kevin, reflections on the, on the nil-nil uh, in the Sheffield derby. For us, <clears throat> I mean, it was a tough watch. Um, but we did what we absolutely had to do, which is not lose. And we kept a clean sheet. I mean, when you've lost four on the bounce and you've conceded lots of goals at home, it's, 
it gets really difficult. You can see confidence was going and they needed to not lose and they, they succeeded in doing it. But to be fair, we never really looked like winning the game. But, no. um, but you know, 75% possession, but our keeper didn't have to do that much. But no. what he did, he did well and he saved the penalty. And the biggest boast of the night was he saved that penalty and that will have done his confidence a power of good. Yeah, Cameron Dawson. Um, only grudging praise from the manager of Sheffield was if there was any praise at all for Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, but he was quite right in how well Sheffield United played in everything but putting the ball in. Yeah, for, I mean, yeah. You, you've summed it up brilliantly there, to be fair. We, we did our usual, we had lots of the ball. Uh, we didn't create quite as much as we usually do. Um, but you have to give credit to the opposition sometimes. And, and Wednesday came and did a job on us, similar to what he did you know, last season as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, fair, fair play, good, good, good defensive display. And we didn't quite have the, the creativity and the, and the finishing that we usually do. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it was a nil-nil that you could justify the tactics of Wednesday, I, I, I thought, that, that night, being neutral and impartial. What do you think, Craig? We, we, are, you were going to say something, I'll bring Craig in. No, no I was just going to make the point that everybody's made, you know, the penalty was the absolute key. Yeah. Uh, had we scored the penalty, then Wednesday would have. I don't think they'd have sat back and accepted one nil. You know, you'd no. have to go for a, get a goal and get a draw, and that would have opened the game up. But so, uh, yeah. great start. I was there on the edge of my sleep, biting my nails in the yeah. pub. Yeah. <laughs> you watching on the box, were you? Yeah. 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 You didn't manage to get a ticket. That's no, I just put yeah. myself up in the local bar and, and had a pint and watched it. Yeah. So. There are penalty misses and there are penalty saves, and I think that was more of the latter, don't you, Kevin? Absolutely. No, no yeah. complaints at all about the, the penalty taken. McGoldrick, he scored his last one, he's got a good record on penalties. He did everything right for me with the penalty, and it was an exceptionally good save. Yeah. To get a hand down there, and it was a strong hand as well, yeah. and to deflect it past the post is yeah. really good goalkeeping. Yeah. One of the best you'll see, I yeah. think, yeah. from a goalkeeper yeah. from a penalty. Are you yeah, happy enough at the... The ends justifying the the means. Yeah, that night well, or what? yeah, definitely would have took that before the start of the game. I think. Yeah. I think uh, we really needed to get a, a, a result, you know, and getting a point against uh, you know a strong Sheffield United side. So yeah, as a as a as a, as a Sheffield Wednesday fan, I've, uh, I, I was happy in that one. Okay. Well, you've got a big weekend coming up, a uh, big w couple of weeks, because I think you've got the two leading clubs uh, yeah, in, got in your division, and, which is yeah. Northern Counties East Premier Division. You've got second place team at the weekend, and then you've got uh, Yorkshire Amateur, I think, are yeah, the that's right, yeah. leaders. Um, let's give you a, he's, a, he's a lovely, happy chap, isn't he? Smart, <laughs> smiling character here. Um, don't be fooled. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Worksop Town fought back for a, I think it was a 2-2 draw against Barton was it Barton Town yeah it was a so you came out with a point with a with a with a late goal and a fight back and uh, so this is what the manager made of it afterwards okay Craig you side nick a point uh, if Barton would have won it would have been probably a fair result what's your assessment yeah true played us off the park I thought we a desire and this commitment off the ball weren't good enough uh, I don't think um, we, we we wanted to. Um, it, it looked like from the from the start that we just weren't at the game, and in the second half we start dropping off again. We're coming at half time one nil up, you know, and it's it's unacceptable. I won't accept players not giving 110 percent for this football club, and if they don't do that, then they're going to get replaced. So there will be a revolving door if players. Do not start being accounted for in their decision making and playing for this football club because that's unacceptable and what I've had to watch and what everybody else has got to pay their hard earned money to come and watch that performance from the workshop town. It ain't happening under my reign as a manager of this football club and players will be made accounted for and do you know what, if I have to bring new players in then I will because it's not acceptable. I like a bit of passion, don't you? Uh, yeah, it sort of reminds me of, of a of a certain manager who's doing very well at the moment, to be honest. Yeah. Similar themes, you know. Yes, Chris, Chris Wilder yeah, would do that, yeah. wouldn't he? Yeah. Back in the day, Dave Bassett would yeah. when you played for Dave yeah, absolutely, Bassett. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you watch that with a grin on your face for the opening few, and, and you're yeah. now, you've, you're cringing a little bit. So Just so. a little bit, yeah. You know, because I think when emotions are, are quite high after a game, you, know, you sometimes say the wrong thing. Um, but, you know, that, that happens. At football level, you know, we I were disappointed in how we 
uh, performed as a team and, and so was all the players you know that I'll always back my players when when they give 110 percent and when uh, we win games but when things aren't right you know we have to have that discussion and I've also got to tell the fans because you know our fans pay their own uh, money to come and to come and watch so I need to to let them know that we, we're not happy with that. But, so uh, so yeah. what, what was the reaction then of, well, the fans to start with, to that? Um, I think it just shows that, you know, we, we, I'm human and everybody else is including the players where it's, we have a level of expectations and, and standards and I think when they don't get met, you know, that, that's, that's what happens when people decide to say, you know what, that, that's not good enough mm. and that needs changing. And, and you know, the, the players, the, they did the same. They, they knew that it wasn't good enough. Presumably, um, you'd said the same in the dressing room or yeah. words to that effect. Yeah, the, yeah. And, and, and it, words that you couldn't repeat on the uh, interview as well, then? Yeah, I've got one or two of those, yeah. Um, yeah. So how did they react then? Um, you know, all players did a little bit different. Um, some sulking in, in a corner. Um, and, and some are more animated than others, um, but I could tell in, in the dressing room that they were they were disappointed in the performance. You know, I, I think that's the key for for non-league clubs, and especially like us, like Worksop Town, is uh, consistent performances. Um, you know, and, and as a and as a fan, as you know, if I'm a Sheffield Wednesday fan, if I see those players um, working hard and, and and giving all they've, they've got, you sort of uh, accept the defeat sometimes. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I get the feeling you wouldn't r readily repeat it. I suppose it's not something that, that kind of interview. It's not no. something you, you could do regularly and have an effect. No, but certainly I, not. And, and that's, that's not me as a manager. Um, right. So when I do um, say things like that, um, I'd, I'd like that to hit home, to be honest. Um, mm. I'm, I'm a really positive manager. I like to praise my players quite often. Um, but when when standards aren't being met, I think you need to you need to stand up and say something. Yeah. Would you, do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think you hit you hit the nail on the head there. You can't just keep battering players, can you? You can't no. do that every single week. No, but you could tell he meant it. He was off. saying what he really thought. Then. Yeah. So it sometimes wasn't... saying less is more, but occasionally yeah. you have to read yeah. the right. I think non-league's changing yeah. in terms of like the the old school sort of manager coming in and and, and mm. kicking the bin and and grabbing players by the throat and effing and blinding him someone's mm. face. Uh, you know, you know these these players have got full time jobs. You know, yeah. they, they they come. Um, mm. Yeah, they're picking a little bit of money up, but uh, that's, having, that's it. And having full-time jobs might just compromise you occasionally when they need, when they're not available, for instance, yeah. for selection. So fans don't always know that, do they? No, they don't. No. You fans. might change the team and they'd be critical, but yeah. the reality is. Yeah, we might have got yeah. a, somebody working down in London as a scaffolder, yeah. you know, and he, and he can't get back up for a midweek game. That's yeah. That's, that's, what you that's live the with. truth. Yeah. How do you go with uh, passion? Uh, Sheffield Wednesday have had. Their fair share of passionate managers in our memory, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Jeff yeah. Charlton <coughs> comes to mind. Ron Atkinson was. Yeah. Um, Gary Megson. Gary Megson, particularly. Yeah. Uh, Jos, uh, it's, through no fault of his own, is a different animal. He is. And doesn't, I, I'm sure he feels deeply about the game, but because he's different, the fans don't quite know whether to accept him or, or not. It, it, the, it's a swing on isn't it? With yeah. your, depending on the result itself. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you stand on it? Uh, to be fair to him, I think he's he's had a tough gig because um, when he came in to the club, um, there were a lot of injuries, um, a squad that had kind of lost confidence, um, and everybody thought he just we just needed to get through to the end of last season, really, which we did, and we picked up results towards the end of last season mm. and I think lots of fans thought if he gets a close season gets to pull his own team together um, gets to get his ideas across because he was always thought that he, was, he starts with getting his teams organized defensively yeah. we'd be sound this season you know kind of but the defense has been the thing that's absolutely let him down this season yeah. you know ironically enough ironically one yeah. clean sheet all season <coughs> um, you know we and that's really let him down and i think when he um he's sometimes on the touchline you know it's kind of when we're conceding goals and he still mm. stays there sat in his chair he doesn't move some fans just think he know, doesn't look good does he he just but you yeah. know that that's a cosmetic thing in the game isn't it whether managers appear to be animated or not this guy 
he's almost invisible at times, isn't he? Yeah. You know, as you say, it's where, uh, is he you, just... You, in, all, in all honesty, you can't, as a manager, you can't change an awful lot whether you're sat in the dugout, stood on the side. Absolutely. You can't yeah. change an awful lot. Yeah. I think fans I, like to see that yeah. sort of animation up and down the line, yeah. And, yeah. and it's great when you've you've scored. You know, you can get up and you know you jump up, yeah. and throw the fist in the air. It's a little bit different when you know when y your team concedes a goal. If you're showing bad body language to the players, yeah, you know, if you can might be showing you're caring by your reaction, but that the way it communicates to players can be quite demoralising. Yeah. I would I say. I mean, if you look at Arsene Wenger, you know. Um, <laughs> He's, he's quite seated most most of the game. Usually, he gets up and does a little bit, but mm. you know that's. I think that's a modern manager. To be honest, you look at Mourinho. Sometimes you just sat back in his seat. We, we, we can take this a stage further because I'm, I've been of, of the view for many, many, many years that a manager is best served probably thirty rows back in the stand. Yeah. yeah. You know, with, on a on a headset or something. You know, talking to his coach. Even then, you can't. Yeah affect too yeah. much well when you get such a better view from the game they do it in rugby they do you know they do it in, uh, in other team sports like that when Sheffield you United can't played see anything Stoke, down there no I agree I was saying it for years when Sheffield United played Stoke the other week Gary Rowett because he was suspended yeah. from the touchline had to watch just along from where I was on the TV gantry I was, where you I was, were. I was six foot from him yeah know, doing the commentary yeah he had a far better view yeah. didn't he yeah from there but yeah, he went straight back down to the touchline the next game. Right, uh, we're going to look at the weekend's uh, big games in uh, part two, because uh, doubtless you'll be at the New York Stadium, will you, for Sheffield United? I'll be watching it, but I'll be sat in my armchair. In your armchair, yeah. right. I haven't got a ticket. I'll be at Hillsborough for Sheffield Wednesday Derby, and you will be away to Peniston Church. And that, you know, a small outfit like that, second in the table, kind of illustrates the pressure that every workshop town manager has because you're the giants aren't you at that that level yeah we are the giants yeah that's right and um that's why when you come up against any other team they want to give play an extra 10 15 20 percent so it makes it even more difficult because you know uh, yeah. great crowds and uh, players opposition they, they, they step up and, and, and raise their game it can be difficult for you at home as well despite that support because i've noticed that your your away record is far superior than yeah. your home form it's like a mirror image yeah. Uh, we'll perhaps talk about that in part two. Meantime, a couple of minutes to the break. Here it is. So it's all Wednesday, uh, a one-off celebratory Sheffield Wednesday fanzine. I don't see War of the Monster Trucks mentioned on the uh, on the, the front cover. No, we did, we did it this um, time. We did it this time. We've been asked for a few fans who kept saying, when are you going to bring the printed version of War of the Monster Trucks back? And we've yeah. kind of ummed and ahed about it. And then... Um, we were interviewed by Matt Exton, who was making yeah. the All Wednesday film. Who's been in here, yeah. Uh, and Matt asked us if we were going to do it, and we went to see the film. We were all kind of energised by the film, so he said, OK, let's do it, but let's kind of link it in with the film. Yeah. So we'll call it the All Wednesday fanzine, and we'll try and uh, do it a bit like the film, really, which is just taking Wednesday stories, fan stories, and making them centre stage. So... It's um, it's more of the monster trucks in style, Very um, much. but it's meant to be kind of just slightly different. Yeah. All your old readers, uh, and they're getting older, yes. will recognise the style, the format, and the humour, yeah. including that front page there. So there you have uh, Sam Hutchinson, and the words are the fanzine that appears more often than I do, <laughs> which is a, a <laughs> which is a brilliant irreverent. But what I like about it is is humour without vitriol. Yeah, you know, it, everybody yeah. can have a little chuckle about that, can't they? Including you'd hope the manager. Yeah, yeah. Jos Luka has been criticised yeah. for leaving him out. And on the back, you've got some uh, some bubbles uh, against the uh, Chris Wilder and uh, Alan Mill. <laughs> 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 the back cage, you can read those out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hell scare at the lane. It says on yeah. the back. And uh, Chris Wilder saying, "Tell me again about the symptoms of swine fever." And Alan Hill saying, you get even more bitter and twisted and can't stop talking about <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> so there we are. Yep. Yep. Uh, but it's all good fun, Chuck. Yeah, I didn't say fun. that. That's, 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 I've just read it out of the magazine. Um, and uh, 
Well, it's, you've only sold one tonight, so you've, you've, in the next 20 minutes, we've got 24 minutes coming up in part two. James Gregg will be here, but you'll be on at the start of it. More from Kevin Gage, more from Craig Denton, and you'll be there, I hope. See you in five. See you.